So let me repeat what I said uh, earlier. Uh, let me thank uh, the organizers, and especially Vinay for asking me to join this session. It's a pleasure to be always talking to teachers and students of mathematics. Um, so um, what I'm going to talk about is uh, something uh, which almost all mathematics teachers and students ask two questions. One, why is mathematics so boring? There is a math phobia among uh, students and maybe among some teachers also. And on the other side, there is a question, how do I make it mathematics simple? How do I make it mathematics interesting? And so on. I think these two questions are related to each other. Uh, I don't know whom to blame. There are many, uh, I can first of all blame uh, the parents themselves. When they send their kids to school, they start uh, telling them, hey, be careful. Mathematics is a difficult subject and uh, you should be very careful in the class. Otherwise, you will be left behind and so on. So even before a person has learned or tried to learn driving, you scare him that the roads ahead of you are full of potholes and uh, there will be accidents and so on. So you already bias your child. Maybe that is because of your own uh, uh, knowledge about mathematics. That is one. Secondly, the possibility is <clears throat> that there is the curriculum is so designed that it does not take into account that mathematics is to be taught in a particular way so that students not get afraid of it, they start loving it. That is a possible thing. And third is the persons who communicate between the books and uh, the student, who take the knowledge from students to, <clears throat> to the students. And uh, maybe it's a all individual effort. How do you transact your curriculum in the classroom? So uh, today's uh, talk is going to be uh, something about uh, more like input to teachers how a particular topic, how a particular lesson for a particular topic can be prepared uh, so that your teaching in the classroom becomes more interesting, students find it more interesting, and hopefully you also start enjoying it. So uh, let me uh, uh, say a few words more before I uh, start uh, sharing my screen and uh, doing something. Um, you see, uh, when you want to serve some food to a particular person, you keep into account many things. What are the food habits of the person? Whether the person uh, likes spicy food or salty food or non oily food or oily food, and uh, whether the food is nutritious and not. While on the other hand, all our education centers around giving same food for all students. A student may like the food, may not like the food. If you like it, the student will take it. If the student doesn't like it, they will feel, remain hungry and uh, starts feeling very sad that, oh, I can't uh, un understand what mathematics is being taught or what food is being served to me. Right. So uh, I'm going to say some strategies uh, that have worked very well uh, for about uh, 500 teachers in Maharashtra. We did a project. I'm getting some interruptions in between. Some others' iPhones are being shown to me, but it doesn't matter actually. Uh, no, um, please so restrict. Please restrict yourself. Yes. Uh, to not. Uh, Okay, so uh, let me, uh, I don't know, where was I? My thought process has gone haywire. Yeah, so it was about the project in Maharashtra government uh, where uh, we trained uh, mathematics teachers, two batches of mathematics teachers of one year each on how to improve the quality of math education. And 
the basic questions that we had in our mind was how to possibly give solutions to the two questions that I asked. So I will try to uh, say something about that. So uh, it may be uh, that methodology of teaching in a classroom, I would like to share with you today. So uh, let me share my screen. Hello. Hello. Participants, please uh, mute your mics. Right. So, uh, title of my presentation is Quality Improvement in Mathematics Teaching, basically pertaining to the classroom how the classroom teaching and learning can be made more interesting and made more effective. Uh, it is not a research Okay, quality improvement in mathematics teaching, that is the title of my presentation uh, today. Uh, the aim is to give you some inputs that directly you can use in your classroom. So, uh, and hopefully they are very simple and uh, suggestions and that should work for you. Uh, let me begin with asking a question. First of all, this is a very nice uh, quote. The mind is not a vessel to be filled, but a fire to be ignited. So uh, teaching should not be taken as taking the knowledge from the books and dumping it in the minds of the students. It's more like uh, igniting a fire in their mind so that they start learning. So there is a difference between the two. So try to understand this quote. And uh, even before that, let me probably, uh, okay. I think let us go ahead. So as I said, the teacher is the link between the knowledge and the students, taking uh, the knowledge to the students. And if you know uh, uh, the concept of functions, this is a set, that is a knowledge, and there is a students, that is a set, and here is a function, that is a teacher. So that gives you mathematically a function. Teacher becomes a function from the set knowledge to the students. So here is mathematics entering into the picture uh, in the uh, pedagogy of uh, teaching and learning. So this is a, uh, and if you try to draw the graph of this uh, function, that that you can call as the learning curve. So let me not go into that much. Uh, so how to make teaching uh, more effective, that is the title of, uh, so there are three steps of uh, teaching and learning that I uh, would like to propose. And this is the three steps that we have tried in our classroom uh, in various uh, districts in Maharashtra. And all over, uh, there has been a very positive response. And many of the teachers have actually started using this kind of technique in their classroom. So in the, the three steps, one is observe and explore. The second is define and prove. And the third is uh, apply and evaluate. So what is the observe and explore? So this is a step that uh, uh, leads to, uh, that is a step that you should be following in your classroom when you want to introduce a concept. The aim is to develop pedagogical and content skills that are necessary for effective as a mathematics teacher to motivate students the topic that you are going to touch. So this is even before we have started teaching a particular topic. This comes as a prelude to the topic that you want to teach, okay? So here is a, uh, how do you do that? Start your lesson with an activity related to the topic. It can be a video, it can be a puzzle, it can be a game, or it can be a hands-on activity. So pick up something that relates to that topic and uh, conduct it. This should, uh, when you are doing that activity, uh, this should motivate uh, you to ask questions and initiate what is called math tap in the classroom. 
uh, this is a uh, very uh, sad thing that we don't allow our students to talk in the classroom and more so about the topic they are learning so this is what is called math talk make your classroom more interactive so that you can ask questions you can get responses of students and start mathematics what is called math talk and uh, there is a lot of research uh, being done how does math talk help in removing the math phobia and making things more interesting so try to inculcate math talk uh, while doing that activity asking leading questions when you are doing that activity you can ask some leading questions solicit uh, solicit uh, students responses and discussions should lead so teacher should be a facilitator leading the discussion to the topic that you want to teach so that uh, the students feel what they are doing is they are discovering themselves so the knowledge becomes their own uh, somebody writing on my screen please avoid that annotating on my screen please avoid that because that will be recorded and uh, there will be a problem okay so let me uh, come back to my uh, presentation okay right okay i have lost now mouse okay okay all right second step uh, in this uh, lesson planning is what is called define and prove once you have reached the concept through the puzzle through the game through the video to the concept that you want to teach then uh, you do what you the regular uh, teaching and learning that is namely that step is called define and prove so this uh, relates to transacting the main part of the curriculum that is what your curriculum is so there you will start defining stating theorems proving theorems and so on okay but in this also try to keep incorporate what is inquiry and discussion you should ask some questions when you are teaching and that should lead to discussion and while proving theorems uh, instead of just giving a proof the reasoning and the proof should be incorporated in that thing and you probably can say something what frequently asked doubts as a teacher you are experienced and you can share what are called frequently asked doubts uh, in that portion that is define and prove when you are teaching a particular topic technical logical tools should be integrated topic wise to strengthen the day to day teaching so i'll be giving you some inputs about the, the technological tools uh, to teach and learn okay in a particular and the third part of uh, the third part of uh, our okay the third part of our uh, lesson planning uh, the third step is apply and evaluate this relates to we have taught we have brought students to a particular concept motivated them to come to a particular concept in observe and explore you have uh, done define and prove prove certain facts in define and prove and the next part is uh, relates to applying the concept uh, whatever they have learned is it relevant uh, uh, to something as apparent something okay let me just see yeah i think i clicked the wrong button probably okay observe and explore define and prove and this part is apply and evaluate okay so uh, as i said apply and evaluate should be you can include some non routine problems which challenge uh, students thinking you can uh, give some real world applications of the topic being taught uh, so that will help you to effectively evaluate what is called the effective uh, teaching whether the uh, whether the lesson that you are transacting is really helping you or not right
Uh, I don't know, there is something. Uh, okay. Right. Okay, here is good. Okay, fine. Um, right. So uh, these three steps basically help you to basically help you to uh, uh, transact your lesson uh, in a nice way in the way that we have taught uh, our about 500 uh, teachers in Maharashtra. So uh, first was uh, so here are three steps again. Let me just go back and say observe and explore, define and prove, apply and evaluate. Right. So is these three steps of teaching. Observe and explore is reaching the concept. Define and prove is uh, uh, transacting the material in the classroom of curriculum. Apply and evaluate is applications of. So let me uh, give you examples of all this. Uh, so uh, I'm going to pick up a particular uh, topic from the curriculum of uh, 9th and 10th. And I'm going to give you some uh, illustrations of what I mean by uh, introducing a topic, coming to a topic, coming to a concept using observe and explore. So in observe and explore, let me show you a video. So watch this video. Uh, it should load uh, in a minute, yes. So boys, जब खिचखिच, बंदना और खांसी से एकदम जोर हुआ आवाज, अब लो नई एक्सट्रीम वाइज। खिचखिच, बंदना और खांसी। Let's do it, boys. नई एक्सट्रीम वाइज। So it's a small uh, video. Uh, this is actually an ad, which nowadays is being aired on uh, TV uh, before most of the programs. If you want, I can play this uh, ad again. Uh, and then uh, start some discussion. For the discussion, I will lead uh, someone uh, from the uh, some of the somebody to respond to my questions. No, sir. Yeah. We'll ask them to raise their hand. Okay, so you monitor who will be responding and what will be their response. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so in this video, uh, after showing this video to the students, I would like to ask uh, questions like, what did you see in the video? So responses please, some of you, uh, you can, all of you can write in your chat box, what is the response, what is this video about? And uh, uh, one of the co-hosts will uh, allow someone to speak about uh, the video. So please go ahead, I want to hear some responses. Uh, yes, so participants can uh, put in their answers. Uh, yes, sir. So someone says that three in one, three problems, one solution. Someone okay. can see someone can see magnification and diminution. Good. Someone is talking about the concept of similarity that a man becomes extremely small or extremely big. Someone is talking about size. Ratio, shape, ascending and descending array, big yeah. and small. Okay, array. so uh, uh, thank you for the inputs. Uh, let me say some of the responses are very interesting. The three in one. Uh, so uh, one tablet solves three problems. That is a good way of interpreting this video. Uh, there is somebody saying uh, this is. Uh, uh, a video where something is magnified and made small, right? And uh, somebody else uh, said something about similarity and ratio and proportions. So uh, you can see uh, the response where something is being magnified and made small, if it is the actual classroom, uh, I will take up that uh, uh, at the point uh, because 
somebody saying it is similarity that means the person uh, already is a teacher probably knowing knowing probably what is the concept being taught so i am keeping in mind that the students for the first time are coming across uh, this uh, uh, topic that we are trying to teach so let us pick up uh, in the classroom uh, the idea that the video shows something it made uh, big and large so right so the person who made uh, this comment i would like to ask that uh, student uh, a question back again when something is being magnified and made small and obviously we all recognize that is the uh, captain of the indian cricket team uh, virat kohli so when uh, it is uh, made small does the smaller image looks like virat kohli or not does the magnified image looks like virat kohli or not the obvious uh, answers uh, when you look at the uh, video again probably would be yes it is only the size of the image of virat kohli is made, being made small but it it is virat kohli recognizable so that should lead to something called the uh, shape and size the uh, shape of the bigger or the smaller objects is same but the sizes are different right so understanding that there is something similar that is the shape is similar but the size is different so this brings out that uh, idea of size and uh, shape so let us uh, go over to this a bit further so here is my question now there is a next uh, question i would like to ask and uh, all of you can put your inputs in your chat box Uh, there are four uh, pictures shown 1 2 3 and 4 so i'm trying to understand that word similar now out of these four can you say some objects are similar to other if yes which ones are similar to what or maybe none is similar to any anything so in your chat box please put this uh, input answer to this what you think could be a response to the question that in these is uh, four pictures maybe one and four are similar whatever reason may be or uh, two and four are similar or uh, two and three are similar so put this uh, in your chat box and uh, let the moderator uh, respond back as soon as uh, yes sir so some people are saying that uh, they aren't similar some are saying that one and three are similar some are saying that two and four are similar while there are some people who are also saying that the flowers are similar to each other based on their color do it so uh, let me go ahead with this kind of responses you see the idea of asking this question was the word similar is interpreted differently by different persons so some people said one and three are similar because both are flowers somebody else gave a response that two and four are similar because both are animals right or two and four are similar because of the picture color is black and white one and three are similar because they are uh, colored pictures or one and three are similar because they are flowers so you see the uh, the aim is trying to make the students understand that the word similar has yet not been made precise by us it is only a english word and that is very uh, subjective depends on the person who is uh, trying to visualize these things so let us go ahead a bit and try to let us look at this activity now so here 1 2 3 and 4 there are four flowers given to you and the question remains the same which pictures are similar which are not and why not so try to write uh, this and uh, raise your hand moderator will try to give your input to me two or three so that i can go ahead uh yes sir so some people have answered that one two and three are pink flowers so they are similar what some are saying that one two and three are similar because they are pink color flowers yeah some are saying that two and four are roses so they are similar yeah 
some are saying that one and two are same flower with same leaves so they are similar okay so now you see how the word similar is being interpreted by different uh, students is as follows that uh, one two and three are similar because they are all pink probably that is somebody said somebody said two and four are similar because both are rose so he is interpreting he or she is interpreting similar as similar uh, similar uh, uh, flower okay similar family of flowers somebody said one and three are similar one and two are similar because the leaves are uh, same right yes, right yes. so uh, in the interpreting similarity as only the characteristic being the leaves whether they are similar or not do you see that still we are not reach a consensus what is similar so let me go ahead a bit and try to make it more uh, understandable what we are saying uh, if possible so now here are activity 3 now i am giving you four, <clears throat> uh, four pictures 1 2 3 and 4 what do you think among these four are which are similar and why which are not similar why not so uh, again uh, two or three uh, responses so that i can go ahead and uh, do something more yes sir so uh, some people are saying that uh, all are similar some are saying that all sizes are not similar then all are similar with different magnifications good so the, already people yeah. have started making distinction now slowly you see from flowers and animals and flowers and flowers of the same color i have come to flowers of the same color now right is the same flower and people are already trying to understand trying to make students visually can say that Uh, probably one and two look different because they are they are similar. If all four are similar, if I interpret them as all are hibiscus flowers, but uh, the size of one and two are uh, different, right? Maybe the proportions are different. This is only a visualization. Maybe all have four have different uh, sizes, right? So still the word similar has not uh, been crystallized. What is similar? so one can go on this kind of activities there are some more so let me uh, skip that for example you can have this kind of pictures so various kind of pictures say now uh, animals now even if uh, for example in this you say one and two are similar that means you think one or two are same picture but distorted in what way it is distorted in what way it is changed can i say that two is a magnification of one right can i say it also is a magnification of one right if i want to say all four it is two mummy ko aaj ko nahi kar ko are mummy someone's mic is on among the participants can you please check it off done 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 so uh, already you see once you reach this stage you are trying to say that things look similar right their uh, shapes look similar by sizes maybe are different so idea of all this uh, exercise is was to bring to uh, uh, the forefront the idea that there is something called similar which should depend on the shape and size so these things okay now for example here is something interesting now look at this four figure pictures 1 2 3 and 4 right all four are of the same flower same uh, flower called hibiscus right and all seems to be not only same they are all flowers of the same family same color same leaves they are similar in fact all are copies of each other why are they copies of each other you can try to see that one or two are reflections of each other okay this is a rotation of uh, three is a rotation of uh, uh, one and four also is a rotation of one so i wanted to show you this uh, uh, slide especially because when you are comparing sizes 
and shapes of objects, something physically that comes in uh, uh, mind is namely, uh, physically what you will do is, you will rotate objects, you will flip objects, you will translate objects, and that is a dynamic aspect of geometry, which unfortunately we don't teach in our classrooms. We teach geometry as a static subject. That's why it becomes a slightly more dry. When there is a movement, things become interesting. So there is a dynamic version of uh, saying that all these four are same, basically that one is a rotation of the other, or one is a reflection of the other, or one is a, a translation of the other, right? And that is more also useful in when you go to congruence so, of triangles. But anyway, till now, whatever we have tried to do is try to bring in what is similar. Similar should mean something that is same in shape but different in. There is an activity that you can try on a graph paper if you like. On a graph paper, you can take the points A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H and join it back to A. So that gives you a, a, a close figure A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and A. This is a close figure. It looks like uh, ears of a cat if you like it, right? So you can draw it on a graph paper. And here are, so here is something uh, which is giving you coordinates also. So uh, coordinate geometry practice also comes in this now. So in this activity, take a graph paper, plot the points A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and construct the polygon that I am just going to describe. So that is one part. So uh, it will give you some hands-on activity uh, with doing uh, uh, something using coordinate geometry and graph paper. Learning also revising coordinates. Okay, so what is the uh, next thing? Now what you do is uh, double the coordinates of each point. You had A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, right? Double the coordinates. So earlier it was two, zero, make it four, zero, zero, three goes to zero, six. So plot the points with the double the coordinates. Double each one of the coordinates. Once they are doubled, join them and you will get a figure like this. Now let us look at these two figures. These two figures, close figures, look like the same, similar. Both look similar. Only the size is uh, different, right? So I am making the concept of shape and size slightly more firm here now. Now you can, well, students can see that both uh, these figures, the earlier polygon, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A, and this new one with double the coordinates is um, similar. So only the sizes are different, but both look similar. One looks, uh, the, the smaller one looks like uh, the ears of a small cat. This looks like the ears of a big cat. Okay, right. Now, if you like, two polygons are similar. Yes, I have already given you the reasons. They look very much similar, right, uh, in the picture, right? You can think of other reasons for giving that. We will also come to that. Because it is a graph paper, if you want to extend this activity, you can ask them to find out what is the area of these two polygons and compare the areas of these two polygons. So here is a beginning of something. If two polygons are similar, what is the relation between the areas of these polygons? So a prelude to something that you're going to prove in your classroom later on, okay? So here is, uh, you can record this. Here is something I wanted to introduce that you can uh, add this, you can do this activity. One is on graph paper and pencil, and you can also do it using something called GeoGebra. Uh, it cannot open chat GeoGebra. Uh, okay, I'll, I think I'll, 
come to this GeoGebra a bit later. The GeoGebra is a dynamical uh, geometry. Uh, GeoGebra uh, is a dynamical geometry software that helps you to uh, do many things, almost everything in geometry and much more in a more dynamic and interesting way. Uh, probably I should do this uh, GeoGebra thing. Uh, if I can spot that, and uh, let me see if I can spot that because something has happened. Uh, my link is not working, but I can still uh, try to see if I can locate that. Oh, it is not there. Okay, let me. I'm. I'm sorry. Uh, this is my mistake. I should have uh, taken care of uh, this. I checked everything should be working, but seems uh, something missed out. Okay, here is, let us see if it works. Oh yes, good. So here is a, a geomet dynamical geometry software called GeoGebra. Now this is, uh, here you can do geometrical geometry virtually on your, uh, on your computer and in a more much more interesting way okay so here is uh, what you can do so i have plotted these points okay uh, as in the problem and you can see that the area between this uh, okay so let us see uh, whether this is visible or not okay. now uh, why, why it is called dynamical geometry software uh, because things can be moved for example, this point K, I can move it anywhere I like. Now, if the point K is here, does this picture looks like similar to the earlier one? We'll say it doesn't look like. Here, this uh, ear of the cat is slightly more straight than this. So, these two pictures are not similar. So, things can be moved uh, in uh, this dynamical geometry software. We'll have more opportunities of seeing this uh, later. So let me go over to what I'm trying to say. In Observe and Explore, you can also look at uh, it's a very interesting video, but I think I will be falling short of my time of one hour. I'll be just, uh, you can uh, try to see shadows, how they change uh, when you, in a dark room, take uh, a torch and take your own hand as you move the torch or the hand the size of uh, the pictures uh, size of the shadows change why that happens one can try to reason it out okay so uh, right so once that has been done you come to the concept so we want to analyze basically is you want to analyze what is uh, uh, can you uh, is my video visible to everybody uh, sir right now we can see your screen okay i minimize it but uh, okay let me just uh, bring my so that I can toggle between the two. Oh, it's already in uh, use somewhere else. Uh, I'll have to uh, exit, I think. I'll have to exit my presentation and come back to presentation. I don't like that. So uh, let me uh, go on uh, uh, audio only without video. Okay. So it's come. Your presentation is come. We can. No, no, presentation is on. I want it presentation not visible, but my video visible. Is is my video visible to everybody? No, no, sir. Okay. How do I make it visible if I want to? I can't. 
So on Zoom, you have to go, sir. There is a start video button. On the top, there is a uh, yes, audio. Yes, yes. You just go there. You will get a panel. Choose virtual video settings. So first, you have to stop sharing your screen. No, no. I don't want to hassle of going back and front. So let me continue. Okay. Okay. So uh, here the question is. If you want to define and prove, uh, we already come to the concept that there is something called shape and size of an object that has to be crystallized mathematically. If you look at uh, a layman's language, size and shape, size uh, being different but shape being same, what do we call it? So if you want to understand in mathematics, the simplest thing in mathematics, uh, the simplest object in mathematics uh, is so similar, uh, okay. So these are uh, things what we have done, uh, and we will come across uh, in day to day life. Also, we can enlarge things and shrink things, things in various ways, and so on, right? So, uh, but let me come back to uh, what I was trying to say. This is what is uh, called. We want to compare two objects, the size and the shape of two objects which are rectilinear. So means what? Right? So that means the objects, their shape is already defined to me. They are called rectilinear. Right? So if two rectilinear, rectilinear, so let us take a, a line segment. So let me probably try to draw it uh, on my, annotate it on my screen. So here is one line segment and here is uh, sorry it doesn't look like a straight line let me uh, try to draw okay i think there is a draw there is a straight line one here and other here okay so forget the earlier one this one so let us take to these two line segments okay they are uh, objects which are uh, in geometry that is the simplest object in geometry that we study a line segment this is a line segment and that is another line segment are these two line segments uh, similar that is a question right so uh, can you uh, put some uh, responses uh, about this are these two line segments similar uh, yes, sir. We are getting responses. So people are replying as no. Some are replying as no. Some are replying as yes. Okay. So already it, uh, there is still not clear what does similarity mean. Similarity means the shape of the object is same, of the two objects are same, but their sizes are not same probably. That is what is called similar. If this is a line segment, it is part of a straight line. This also is a line segment. That is a part of a line segment so these two shapes are same they have the same shape namely they are line segments right but their sizes are obviously look different this looks smaller the first one this looks bigger so uh, from here would you like to say that two line segments are always similar the simplest object in geometry line segments. Can we say that two line segments are always similar? Yes, because their sh shape is same, both are rectilinear, but their sizes are different. Right? So shape is same, but sizes are different. And that will say that these two objects are similar when, so are trying to define objects being similar when their shape is same, but the sizes are different. The simplest object we have taken is line segments. Okay. Now, what is the next uh, best thing possible you can do? Let us try to see it with some uh, angles. Okay. So, can we say uh, if I draw these two, are these two angles uh, similar? How do I check whether these two angles are similar or not? What is an angle? So that brings us to the concept of what is an angle. 
to me here uh, as i have drawn it it looks like from this point if you call it as uh, okay uh, i want to name these things so i have to go to draw and uh, okay so this is a and this is b i'm writing with my mouse so my handwriting is coming very bad so this is d and this is e and this is f can i say these two angles are similar what is an angle it is made up of something that is captured between two yes so we have some responses yes so angle is union of two rays when two rays meet at a common point then we get an angle okay and uh, people are saying that yes the two angles shown on the screen are similar union of two rays with common origin yeah okay now if you want to say these two angles are similar or not what you will try to do probably you will try to translate this angle here and probably rotate it and then try to see whether the lines match or not right so basically angle definition of angle is where two rays meet right here i can't draw a ray on a paper because i have to i can only draw a segment so this is a ray and this is another ray right so a angle is made up of two rays which are straight lines in a sense so and we have already agreed that two straight lines are always same shape so this ab is same shape as bc and same shape as be and same shape as ef but the space captured between them the angle made by between them may not be same right so if you want to say that these are similar i will have to ensure that this angle right because ab is always similar to be or bc or ef what else i can say so this space between them to say that they are they are similar i'll have to ensure that these two are equal so that gives me a definition of angles being similar two angles are similar when the angles are equal so that is the definition of similarity of angles okay so what is the next best possible thing next best possible thing in the geometry is trying to study triangles so here is one triangle i think probably i should go to geogebra this is the right time to go to geogebra and uh, here is the good so i i should have deleted my uh, things so here is deleted right so let me delete delete those annotations that i made and i look at uh, so here is a, a geogebra uh, panel what i have done is i have drawn uh, two uh, uh, angles here and i want to see whether these two angles are uh, similar or not so i will have to one way is here is the dynamics of uh, the software and dynamics of geometry coming into picture i can i can try to move this angle here to move that in the software i have to do this so when i move it so if i make the vertex of the angle coincide so not only vertex coincides the arms also coincide so these two angles are similar okay the next thing uh, possible in the uh, next thing possible uh, in geometry is a close figure which is made up of uh, sides segments and the simplest close figure is nothing but uh, a triangle so when can we say two triangles are uh, similar what should be the definition of two triangles being similar i am trying to reach a definition so if two triangles a b and c and a dash b dash c dash uh, are given to me so here is c dash two triangles are given to me 
Can I say that it is two uh, can I say that these two triangles uh, are uh, similar? Of course, both are triangles. So I'll say because both are triangles, they should be similar, right? But let us treat these triangles as geometric objects. They are made up of line segments and made up of angles. And we have already defined what is the meaning of similarity of segments. Two segments are already always similar. So AB is similar to A dash B dash or A1 B1. This one line segment B is also similar to this line segment. This is similar to this. So line segments are similar, but what can I say about the angles in between? If I want to say that these two figures are similar, I should ensure that the angles uh, between these uh, line segments, or if I treat them as rows, uh, as rays, they are same. So how do I ensure that? So that is uh, brought by, uh, I can do that. So here is a way of doing that. I'm moving, I'm moving my, okay. So in physic physically, you'll think of lifting the triangle and sliding it, translating it over the triangle. So this angle is equal. So this segment is equal, is similar to that segment. And the bigger segment is, is similar to smaller and the angles are same. So this angle is same. I can also take it uh, on the other thing. So I can also move it uh, there. So these angles are also equal. And the third one, I can see that these two angles are also equal. So in these two triangles, okay, I can also look at this way. Are these two triangles similar? Yes, because this line segment is similar to this, this line segment is similar to this, this line segment is similar to this, and the angles or this is equal to this. But this angle is not equal to this. So here comes the idea of correspondence. If I want to say that two triangles are similar, one triangle is ABC, other triangle is A1, B1, C1, or A dash, B dash, C dash, these two triangles are similar if line segments are always similar, but which angles are similar or not, that I have to verify. So maybe this angle is similar to this, or maybe this angle is similar to this. So in that case, I'll have to rotate this. So that is the idea of correspondence. Two triangles are similar requires a correspondence. And what is the correspondence? A, B, C has three vertices, A, B, and C. A dash, B dash, C dash has three vertices. A correspondence is a one, one onto map. You correspond one vertex of one to another, second vertex of one triangle to second, some other vertex of it, and third vertex of the third. In that correspondence, the corresponding angles should be equal for the corresponding segments. So that is uh, a very, uh, subtle concept where students make mistakes in understanding why a correspondence is required, right? So saying two triangles, the definition of what is two triangles are con con uh, similar, two triangles are similar if there is a correspondence between the vertices of one and the vertices of the other so that the included angles are equal. That is what is required. That's all. That is the definition. That is what is required. And once that definition is made, then you prove uh, various uh, theorems uh, that that uh, two triangles are similar. Then you prove that their sides uh, are in a particular ratio. And conversely, if the sides are in a particular ratio, then the angles are also equal. So equiangular is similar and the sides are in proportional. Those are all theorems which you prove uh, in your textbook and you will do it in the classroom. But all those theorems, if you uh, do it with the GeoGebra, you will be very happy. 
because the students uh, will see the geometry of it. So one is in similarity, there is a correspondence that is a map, one one map from the three vertices of one to the three vertices of other. And then there are transformations called dilations and rotations. Now, this is a very, uh, <clears throat> this is an activity which I had done in my childhood. Um, I wanted to be a painter, but I could not. So then somebody told me this is a very good way of uh, uh, making, uh, making a drawing of your picture when the computer softwares were not there. Given this picture, here is the picture of a, uh, a small wolf. Okay. Um, and if you want to magnify it, what you do is draw small squares. Right. And then draw a bigger, a bigger, uh, if this is three and you want to enlarge it three times or four times, a bigger proportional uh, rectangle and draw those many uh, uh, squares inside as the original one. And then you draw this small ear. So then you draw this small ear kind of thing, right? And then this curve going here and you draw this curve in this. So that way it will give you an enlargement of, uh, and this can be done in GeoGebra very nicely. And same uh, translation and reflections can be done in GeoGebra. So these are the dynamic versions of so, so here are dilations uh, and rotations. Dilation is expanding and shrinking. Rotations, we know what is rotation. Translation is moving around and reflection is like reflection in a mirror. These are very important geometric transformations which are useful, which are used in geometry. Uh, in similarity as well as its transformations uh, are used in congruence and uh, they play an important role later on when students want to study what are called linear algebra. So I will not go into that. So we have defined uh, what is uh, similarity in okay. Right. Uh, I think I picked up a wrong uh, presentation. I'll have to go back and uh, pick up. Uh, um, uh, in the meantime, you can think of writing some questions in the chat box, which we'll try to answer. And let me locate uh, uh, the presentation that I want to actually wanted to make. Uh, there is a part of it here, which I wanted to use something bigger actually. The remaining part of my presentation is, I think, here, and let me see what it is. Now, oh, that is also there. Okay, I think there is a slight issue. Uh, let me. Okay, let me just uh, give me a minute. In the meantime, please write your questions. I'll have to leave the presentation, stop screen presentation for a minute. Uh, my video is on the screen. That doesn't matter. You can look at my picture in the meantime. Uh, yes.
Okay. Uh, is my presentation visible? No, sir. Okay. I'll I'll share it again. I think I have not shared it. So where do I? Okay. Share screen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, now we have uh, I have given you some inputs uh, regarding observe and explore, how to get to a concept, define and prove, how to prove uh, various things, define and prove uh, your transacting your material. That I have not done much because that is your, your textbook anyway. And I want to say uh, share something about uh, apply and uh, evaluate. Uh, let me also say something about uh, in your uh, in your uh, textbooks on your curriculum. You only deal with the similarity of triangles. One can ask a question: When do I say to uh, rectangles next four-sided figure closed? When do I say a rectangle is uh, two rectangles are similar? Okay. Can I say two rectangles are similar? When do I say? What is the definition of two rectangles being similar? When are two pentagons similar? When is a hexagon, two hexagons similar? We saw that example of uh, two cats, uh, the ears of two uh, cats, one smaller, one bigger. We said they look similar. Yes, they were similar, right? So, uh, what makes them uh, this kind of a thing, right? So what could be a proper definition of saying a closed figure? Has it to be closed? Or any figure in one, uh, two figures are similar. That is a very uh, interesting question to answer because we can try to answer very nicely what is similarity for figures which are rectilinear, line segments, angles, triangles we can also do it with without much difficulty uh, say two two rectangles we will say two rectangles are similar because they have the same shape right only the sizes the sizes what are the sizes of the sides the two parallel sides are equal pairs of sides if they are proportional then we will say that uh, these two rectangles are similar so we can define for that similarly we can define uh, two say hexagons, all uh, closed hexagons, all internal angles uh, are equal, and uh, if um, the sides are proportional, then they will be similar. Now that is a, a nice thing to do in GeoGebra. You can uh, uh, probably uh, let me quickly do it for you to uh, to help you understand that GeoGebra is not difficult. So let me uh, let me remove axis. Let me remove grid. I don't need it. So let me. Uh, what I am doing is may not be uh, to all. Okay. Uh, why I am doing this? We'll just now see. It. Uh, so let me uh, make uh, what I was trying to say a regular polygon uh, I don't want that I want to uh, do Okay, so let me draw a point first and then uh, draw, okay, draw a segment. Uh, I think I'm probably, uh, I hope I'm not wasting too much of a time. Segment of a given length, of a given length B. So it gives me a segment of a given length B and uh, 
Uh, are you able to see my uh, screen sharing? Yes, sir. GeoGebra is visible, na? Right? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, okay, fine. I was just worried that uh, you shouldn't be seeing my face. Okay, maybe so I was trying to do a. Uh, okay, let me. Regular reply. Okay, and I want another slider. So a slider here. Then I'll just explain in a minute what I am doing. Okay, so I want a regular uh, polygon. Offside. Yeah. Now I am done. What I am doing is. See, I am constructing a, a regular polygon. So it is this number. I should have uh, made it an integer. So let me number properties. Number. See, as I move the slider, you can see uh, so this is a 15 gone and so on. Okay, so in GeoGebra, you can do such kind of things. I have constructed a polygon, a regular polygon with side as equal to B. Okay, if I change this, you see the size of the polygon changes. Right, and this is the number of sides, they become more or less. So let us take uh, a, a regular polygon. Okay, so this is a regular polygon of side as B is 1.6. So we know all the internal angles of this polygon, uh, same as uh, if I draw another one, right? So what will be the ratio of, uh, right? So what will be the ratio of this polygon with the other one? For that, uh, I can uh, draw uh, another one. Uh, okay. So let me uh, to make it really interesting. So let me. Uh, And uh, just uh, draw another idea. Okay, so I think uh, we are in a good shape now. Now you see if I, uh, this is, this is the indicator of the sides. If the things are not visible, let me make it slightly bigger. Font size 20. Yes, it should be okay. So here is. Now you see, uh, can you say this polygon 1 and polygon 2 are similar? Well, I can do that. So what we'll have to do is I'll have to check the angles. So one can check what are the angles of this. So I can uh, see here internal angle is 128. And here is the internal angles. The internal angles are both are same. So these are regular uh, polygons. So internal angles here is this, here is this. So all the internal angles are equal, right? So if I can sh say that the ratio of uh, 
the sides are proportional then i will be happy and if you see it this uh, segment f1 there is f1 on come on the left side here of the panel f1 is 3.2 and g1 is 1.6 so the side here is 1.6 and this is uh, 3.2 so the ratio is uh, 3.2 okay so uh, the sides are proportional and uh, and uh, the angles are equal so these two hexagons are similar okay so let us increase you see this is what is dynamic geometry software i can increase the number of sides okay so angles remain equal internal angles are equal for both and the, the sides are proportional so i can say this polygon 1 is similar to the polygon 2 and uh, here is a interesting question i would like to ask when will you say two circles are similar so please uh, give an answer to the question when are two circles similar yeah so inputs please yes so participants can put their answers in chat section yeah so some responses when are two circles similar uh yes sir we have got some responses yes so, uh, circles are always similar circles are similar when the radius is same when the radii are in proportion these are the few responses okay. that we got so somebody says circle is always <clears throat> similar the person is confusing <clears throat> that the shape of <clears throat> two circles right yes sir two circles are similar because they are circular yes but so let me draw two circles here okay so here is a, a circle with center radius is b So here is the other one. Okay, so let me move it slightly. Can I say uh, here is interesting thing I can do? I can uh, object properties and do it uh, in red. Okay, and style slightly bigger. This color. So, can you say that this red circle is similar to the green circle? I think even somebody who does not know mathematics will say that these two are similar. Yes, looks like they are circular. This is also a circle. So, those two are similar, right? So, two circles are always similar, like two segments. They are always similar, right? Only thing is, if they are similar, then radii will have some relation, right? Radius of this one will be radius of some constant multiple of radius of this one. Now, can you think why do we say that two circles are always similar? Can we deduce it from the polygons? Is there any relation between the polygons and the circle so that is a question probably i think uh, has it, does anybody have an answer to this or I want to venture why how do you get that two circles are always similar right because the shapes are same yes sir one of the participants has also responded as sub yep. angles angles of sum of angles in polygon mm -hmm. how much is sum of the angles in the polygon it is angles of circle are 360 complete 360 degree yeah that is interesting you see you think of circle as a regular polygon with 
how many internal angles there is no concept of internal angles of a circle so the way of visualizing that is for a circle what are the characteristics a circle is determined by the shape of this it is a locus of all the points at a particular distance right so it is a distance of this from any point on the locus that matters so any two will be similar another way of looking that would be if you look at <clears throat> uh, two uh, polygons as you keep on increasing the number of sides it becomes the circle so let me uh, show you that after some stage you will not be able to visualize it so let me increase from 10 i am increasing oh it's going very big maybe let me probably uh, shrink it a bit so zoom out okay let me move it here and let us uh, move these objects okay they are overlapping but i can't help it now you see as increase the number of sides what is happening to n-gons when the number becomes much much large they almost tend to become circles so uh, the idea is as as the number of sides increase the polygon n gon tends to become a circle so internal angles become uh, it's only the side the distance from the center of it which depends upon uh, the side actually right that become equal see the for a n gon the center to the point okay that distance depends on the side of it so one can okay so uh, i just wanted to uh, say that if you like in your classroom you can extend the idea of triangles being similar to polygons being similar and then say what could be the definition of a circles being similar right in general the idea of uh, <clears throat> idea of uh, two uh, figures being similar is more complicated that requires uh, more discussion so here is something about apply and evaluate uh, do these things have any applications uh, yes lot of it so what is it we are doing we are looking at similarity of uh, objects so this you must have done in your classroom so i won't spend time on it that uh, if you want to find out the height of a flag post you can do it uh, by measuring shadows you try to put a stick supposing sun is somewhere on the top on the right side the light rays are coming light rays hits at b and then it gives a shadow so ac is the shadow of the pole you can try to put a stick in between ed so that the the shadow of the stick matches the top matches with c so once you do that then you understand that these two triangles c e d and uh, b c a are similar so the sides must be in proportional so if you can measure c d and measure c a and take the ratio that should be same as the ratio of e d and b a so if you know e d you can calculate b a So that is a standard example given in textbooks also so you can do that there is something which is not probably given in textbooks measuring suppose you want to measure the height of kutub uh, minar so if you want to measure the height of kutub minar uh, uh, then uh, you can't look at the shadows and such things so a easier way would be uh, put a mirror here somewhere a bit far away from uh, okay once hello, you put a mirror hello you, sir yeah uh, so we need to uh, wind up in few minutes around 5 okay. minutes or so okay i'll wind up i want to do other applications so this is probably not given so i'll do that 
so this uh, i put a mirror so that while standing you can see the top of the qutub minar so light rays going here and light rays coming and hitting here right your eye so you can see the top and that uh, should tell you from physics the angle of incidence is equal to angle of refraction uh, reflection so that should help you to prove that these two uh, triangles are these two triangles are similar and if you know the height of uh, uh, height of uh, ad you can calculate the height of the qutub minar once you know what is the distance ac and what is the distance bc so these are applications and all this can be done in geodebra they can be very well uh, done in geodebra to make things interesting for students so these are useful in making maps okay there are problems in uh, shadows uh, probably i'll just uh, here is uh, okay here is a problem which you can try a man is standing on a road and there are lamps on both sides from this lamp post the shadow falls at the base of this lamp post and from the lamp post from the right side left side the shadow of the man falls at the base of this suppose that is given to you okay and suppose you are given what are the heights r1 and r2 of the lamps this r1 and r2 are given and the height of the man is uh, say r so what is the relation between these three heights height of the man height of the lamp post r1 and height of the lamp post r2 so what are the relations between these three heights you can try to solve later on and uh, try to interpret okay the man's height is r so what is the relation between these okay so uh, let me wind up uh, this session by uh, recalling what i have done i have tried to give you input on how to go about planning your classrooms we should divide it into three parts first part should be observe and explore where you should do something you see uh, showing a video doing a puzzle catches the attention of the students right uh, it tells the students you are going to do something interesting you are not going to repeat what is in the classroom what is in the curriculum written down there right and that will also help them slowly to come to the concept so observe and explore bring to the concept define and prove do what your classroom curriculum says and apply and evaluate give them something that helps them to understand that the classroom mathematics they are doing is actually related to the outward world also so there is relation between the two okay classroom uh, mathematics is not for exams it is also for exams and also for solving real world uh, problems so that you should do and all along try to bring in what is uh, classroom uh, interaction what is uh, uh, math talk and such things right so let me stop here and uh, uh, come to uh, something which is uh, observe and uh, uh, about question answers if we want to uh, do some so let me stop here and uh, in case uh, there are some two or three questions i don't mind even taking five questions but i think this time is already up so uh, you want to put some questions yes sir uh, over yes. to arjuna yeah yes sir thank you for that effective input now there are some questions from participants on zoom and youtube both that i would be asking you and the first question is as follows uh, while teaching students in the age group of 10 to 15 years i have noticed that children do not want to go creative or aren't curious enough to want to solve non routine questions how to build up on it uh here the problem lies with the parents or our education system the all our education system is geared towards examination and doing well in examination and our examination system asks only repeated skill based questions does not ask concept based questions right so unless the student feels the need to do concept based questions right they will not be interested 
So this is a big challenge. I agree that how to make students understand that what they are doing is concept based. Okay, it is create activity based. They have to do something to understand something. It is not just solving problems. Right? Two plus two is four, but why it is four? That they have to understand, and that is the problem. Like Una with our education system, our education system has not till now come to the stage evolved out of a stage where we can evaluate creative questions, promote independent thinking. Our even curriculum does not put some questions in the textbook for those students who want to build their intuition. Right. So I say, as a teacher. can pick up some good students good good in the sense who are interested in this kind of things and maybe hold some extra classes once in a while once in a week once in a month as and when they want it kind of thing as and when you can do it so responsibility lies on the teacher till it is forced by the curriculum to do questions which are creative and independent thinking yes sir thank you our next question is Like we have geogebra for geometry, is there any tool to teach algebra? Uh, I should have said that geogebra is a combination of geometry, first three letters G E O, and last three letters of algebra, geogebra G B R A. So not only it helps you to understand many things, almost everything in geometry, it helps you to understand lot of things in algebra. okay not everything of course because algebra is more uh, uh, symbolic based kind of computing but it helps you to understand many things in algebra uh, you will have to learn algebra and on the algebra there is a what is called algebra panel so i think i uh, there is for example on the left side oh i am not sharing my screen so i can't show you that so when you open geogebra there is on the left side whatever algebra you are doing on the geometry panel that is a visible as a algebra on the algebra panel also so lot of algebra can be done and you will be surprised now you can do lot of statistics you can uh, do lot of 3d geometry using geogebra so explore geogebra yes sir thank you uh, thank you for answering all questions so patiently i just have one last question for you sir can you suggest some strategies to reduce math anxiety in classroom remove exams if there are no exams there won't be any stress on anyone there won't be any exam see now at present what is happening is every month there is a unit test or every week there is a unit test the student is always worried about performing 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 in a unit test performing in a tri semester performing in a middle school uh, mid year performing in annual and other kind of things exam is inversely proportional to understanding if there are more exams there will be less understanding that is my term and uh, almost every teacher will agree to it and uh, every i think Uh, there, because there are no as such formal exams till fifth standard, and they know that probably in many states they will be promoted. I think there is more uh, incentive for teachers to do some creative uh, teaching and learning at least up to fifth. And once the students um, enjoy creative uh, teaching and learning, once you do sixth standard onwards, they last two. Madam, वैसे ही करिए ना जैसे प्राइमरी में करते थे, वैसे ही सिखाइए. so they will catch you so yes. do that till i said till our assessment system till our book writing improves there is very hardly any scope of improvement it all depends on parents and teachers innovative teachers can innovate rather than just linearly transacting curriculum from the book to the classroom don't yes do sir that. thank you so much uh, yes sir thank you so much for answering uh, we have lot many questions but participant as you see due to time constraint we are not able to take up all questions but yes uh, you can reach out to sir on the mail that will be provided on the whatsapp group after this session anyway, so that's I, it for the simple email to remember is ik rana ik r a n a that is my name initial small letters one word ik rana 
let's give it. So you won't okay. forget. Okay. Okay. Thank and you. Thank so you very much for being part of uh, uh, this uh, session. Uh, your your contribution to my would be your questions, your inputs. What would you have liked to see? What answers you would like? If you send me some inputs like that, that will help me to do a better job next time. I can help you better next time. Thank you very much, and thank you, organizers. That's it for the Q and A session. Over to you, Vinny, ma'am. Okay. Um... I would request uh, Dr. Susama Samuel, our principal, to say a few words now. Okay. Thank you, Vinny. Yes, ma'am. Uh, now uh, we have come to the end of uh, two-day webinar on strategies and solutions for boosting mathematics uh, learning. Uh, and this webinar was meant for the students uh, and the teachers of all levels, from primary. Uh, from primary to higher education. And I think um, uh, it was a very useful um, session for the parents also. And next time we should see to it that parents should be compulsory participating in this webinar because it was helpful for the parents also. And uh, the purpose of this uh, two-day webinar was to discuss the quality of mathematics education. And yesterday for the first session, we had Ms. Sarah Parekh uh, spoke on how to engage students in class through various interesting strategies and how a mathematics uh, teacher should provide learning experiences through uh, real life situations so that learning becomes uh, uh, natural to them. And today, um, Professor Rana sir also spoke on the same line how to improve the quality of uh, mathematics teaching and mathematics learning. And uh, uh, Sir has shared lots of uh, his expertise uh, with us on how to develop interest in class through uh, maths talk, uh, maths activities, and also uh, how to remove that uh, the phobia, maths phobia from the um, students' mind. So both the sessions uh, were very informative very informative and in the coming sessions and in the web series, uh, I think uh, we will discuss various uh, factors to improve the quality of mathematics education from uh, different dimensions. So this uh, initiative uh, was conceived and conceptualized uh, by Dr. Vinnie Sebastian, Associate Professor and her mathematics pedagogy unit. Uh, so Dr. Vinnie, a well-planned and uh, uh, well-conducted uh, session. And so congratulations to you and your team and the students. I'm not taking the name of the students, but the, all the students who put uh, uh, inputs to this. So congratulations to all of them. So on behalf of uh, St. Xavier's Institute of Education, I express uh, my uh, appreciation as well as a big thank you to you and uh, your team. So all the best for the coming uh, uh, sessions, uh, the web series, uh, what we are planning. Good luck. And uh, I thank uh, both the resource persons, Miss um, uh, Parekh and also Rana sir, for this uh, interesting and informative sessions. I thank all participants, our faculty members, our colleagues, and the students, those who have participated in this session. Thank you very much. And uh, over to Dr. Vinay. I think you can wind up. It's okay. So, uh, without much delay, uh, in case Vinny wants to say something. Yes, sir. Uh, we have uh, one of our participants who wants to share her uh, her reactions to this uh, webinar. So, she um, unfortunately, she couldn't come in uh, in YouTube, uh, in the Zoom, but now she is just coming in. And she will be just sharing her reactions to the webinar. So can we just wait for a minute? Uh, she's just coming in. Okay.
got in it is blocking no it is open actually no oh, i already announced no no come 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 i have disabled the waiting room also Okay. In the meantime, uh, I would just remind the participants about uh, the feedback form, which is going to be uh, posted on the uh, WhatsApp link. Uh, please uh, fill the feedback form, and uh, maybe we'll take some time to enable the certificates for those who have attended both the days. We would also uh, request you to uh, send the one-minute video of your perceptions of mathematics education. and uh, we would love to uh, upload it on the youtube channel we also request uh, you if you are a resource person or if you want to speak up on uh, innovations which you have done in mathematics please write to us on the email id which is given in the brochure so that we can have uh, uh, we can continue this journey which we have started we want to uh, see that there is some difference made in this area of teaching learning and we want to contribute uh, a lot to society so i would love to have all of you on this platform and journeying with us towards our objective uh, so rashida ma'am are you in yes yes i am here really yes uh, so we welcome uh, rashida dr rashida kapadia who will be speaking for few minutes on her impressions about the webinar Yes, Dr. Rashida, can we uh, see you? Yes, I. There's somebody already speaking. Okay. Uh. Uh, so, Rashida, ma'am, are you in? Yes, yes, I'm there, Vinny. Yes, uh, is my uh, audio? Uh, Rashida, you have to mute your YouTube. If you are on YouTube, also mute that. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, can you hear me now, Vinny? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. We can hear you. We can. Okay. Okay. Um, a very good afternoon to all. Um, yeah. respected uh, father blaze respected principal dr sosama samuel uh, dr vinny sebastian uh, uh, our guest speaker dr inder rana um, and uh, all the participants i'm so glad to be speaking at the sxi platform once again um, sorry i'm not i'm not able to start my video for some reason as you know uh, dr vinny has already said it's a last minute uh, um, this thing i couldn't join initially earlier um definitely this was a very very uh, informative session the yesterday's session and today's session both were very well planned uh, giving us an insight into details about how elementary education and higher education can be considered for maths and uh, especially dr inder rana we thank you can't thank you enough actually because you gave us a lot of examples that will help us a uh, lot uh, in your know, use that we can use in our classes so uh, i am just too glad that uh, you know that uh, what uh, sinjevas institute of education the math mathematics pedagogy unit is doing reaching out to teachers and teacher educators for making maths uh, you know more enjoyable so kudos to the group the uh, student uh, team as well and uh, we hope to continue interacting and uh, get uh, being a participant to such more interesting series thank you all and a um, uh, big big thanks to sensevas institute of education for having organized this thank you rachida ma'am over to also now also now yes ma'am uh, okay So, on behalf of Saint Xavier's Institute of Education Manager, Father Blaise de Souza, Principal Dr. Sosama Samuel, and Mathematics Pedagogy Staff in Charge, Dr. Vinny Sebastian, I would like to extend a hearty vote of thanks to our speaker, Professor Inder Rana, who has enlightened us all with an amazing session today. 
Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation readily for this webinar. We are really grateful to you for sharing your knowledge with us. I am sure that all our participants today have gained some amazing insights on how we can improve teaching. Elaborating on three steps of teaching based on your experience in various districts of Maharashtra. Through your session, you have also helped us all develop the pedagogical and content skills that are necessary for effectiveness as a mathematics teacher. You have also shown us actual demonstration on GeoGebra, which I am sure every participant will agree as an excellent hands-on experience. So thank you once again, sir. We couldn't have asked for a more better resource person. Next, I would also like to thank our dear manager, Father Blaze, and principal, Dr. Sosama, for allowing us to organize this math webinar. I would especially like to thank our staff in charge, Dr. Vinnie Sebastian, for coming up with this wonderful idea of having an online math webinar in current COVID situation. Thank you, ma'am, for your support. Thank you to our student coordinators, Neville Sharma, Riesel Gonsalves, and Clarice Lemos for being the strong team behind the curtain and providing technical support. As organizers, we were not expecting to have 1,000 plus registrations, and arranging an online platform for such a large audience was made successful by the hard work put in by each and everyone. And last but not the least, a big thank you to all the participants for your presence. Without each and every one of you on Zoom and YouTube, this event wouldn't be successful, and we hope that you are taking back something with you from these two-day sessions that you will make use of in your respective field. So thank you for making this event successful with your enthusiastic participation. And with this, I will end my vote of thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. OK. Welcome. My pleasure. OK. Thank you, sir. Everybody take care. Safe home back. You are already at home, so be safe. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, bye. Take care. Bye, bye. Thank you very much. Who was that? Ma'am, this is Annette here. Oh, hi, Annette. How are you? Good, good, good. Nice, nice uh, initiative taken, huh, ma'am. Uh, thanks, Annette. Please have more of this. Please have more of this. Yes, we are planning. Okay. So, uh, be uh, sure of having me there. <laughs> okay, okay. We will definitely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Bye. Ma'am, we leave the meeting room now? Yes, yes. Thank you, ma'am, for everything. Thank you, Neville.